you've probably been hearing of vermiculture or composting with worm for quite some time. You've probably seen a few videos on people who are worm farming and you see how happy it makes them when they have a worm farm. You've probably seen also how their gardens have benefited from worm farming. And so now you're quite excited. You're thinking, oh, I want to get into this. This sounds like a lot of fun and it sounds like it could do a lot of good for my garden. But then you start to think, how will I know which composting worms is the right one for me? Which one should I get? So in today's video, I am going to be discussing the five most popular composting worms. And then this information should be able to help you to decide which of these worms you would like to use for your worm farm. Hi, I'm White Davy from White Davy Garden and Worm Farm. Welcome to my channel. There are five popular worms that are used for vermicomposting, and those are the red wigglers, the European night crawlers, the Canadian night crawlers, the African night crawlers, and the blue worms. Of these, the red wigglers are the most popular. The red wigglers can withstand a wide range of temperature. They can survive a reasonable amount of heat, a reasonable amount of cold. Their cocoons can survive a freezing. And then as soon as the temperature is warm enough, then the cocoons will actually start hatching. Red wigglers are not very big worms. They are small, but although they are small, they do eat a lot. Worms in general can heat up to half or their full body weights in a day. So the red wigglers are small, but what they lack in body size, they make up for in their rate of reproduction. They reach maturity much faster than the other composting worms. They lay more cocoons in a week than the other composting worms. Their cocoons hatch faster than the other composting worms. Red wigglers are said to be top feeders, but as long as the material is loose enough in the worm bin, they will go wherever the food is. So they will go deep into the bin, they will be on the surface of the bin, they go right throughout the bin. Red wigglers are worms that readily settle down in their new environment. If you see them trying to escape, it is usually because there is something wrong with the bin or that they are new to the environment. The red wigglers can withstand changes in their worm bin that other worms can't. For example, if there is not enough moisture in the bin or there isn't enough food in the bin or if the bin is too acidic, they can survive that more than other worms can, but only to a small extent the european night crawlers these worms are similar to the red wigglers in terms of temperature range that they can withstand and they however do not like anything that is acidic at all they will try to escape your bin if the bin is acidic all worms will but the european night crawlers are very very finicky where that is concerned they do not like to be handled unlike the red wigglers that don't mind being handling the european night crawlers like to be left alone in fact all worms do but the european night crawlers are more finicky where that is concerned they can survive a wide range of temperatures similar to that of the red wigglers they do not reproduce as much as the red wigglers do, but what they lack in their rate of reproduction, they make up for in their body weight. African night crawlers can withstand the most heat out of all these composting worms. They cannot stand the cold at all. They cannot survive freezing. And unlike the red wiggler and the European night crawler cocoons that can survive freezing, the African night crawlers cocoon will not survive freezing. African night crawlers love to burrow down, so it is best to put them in deep bins as opposed to shallow bins. They like to move around too. They reproduce at a lower rate than red wigglers do. 
these worms are bigger than the red wigglers. The blue worms are smaller than the red wigglers. They are the smallest of the composting worms. They reproduce just as fast as the red wigglers. They eat as much as the red wigglers. They reach maturity roughly around the same time as the red wigglers. But these worms are similar to the African night crawlers in that they prefer the otter environment. They don't do well in cool environment and they will invade other bins that are close by. So if you want to keep your worms separate, separated by their species or their kind, then it is recommended that you keep the blue worms far away from other worm bins. Ensuring that the condition in these blue worm bin is ideal will help to keep them in that bin instead of wandering around. Now, when you are purchasing worms, if you want to have just a specific species of worm in your bin, you have to be careful where you buy your worms because there are some commercial worm farmers who will sell you a mix bin or mixed worms if you for example when you order red wigglers from some companies you will get a combination of red wigglers and blue worms so you have to be specific about that to ensure that you get the worms that you are purchasing so you can ask your supplier before purchasing the worms the canadian night crawlers these are the most difficult worms to raise unless of course you live in an environment where it's mostly cool and they're difficult to raise because they do not like eat at all so you have to keep them cool so for example in the summer or the warmer months you have to make sure that you keep them cool or they will either die off or they will escape from your bin so you have to keep them cool year round because they're able to withstand very cool temperatures they are ideal for regions that have very long winters not for regions that experience tropical conditions or have very hot summers they are the largest of the composting worms which is why they are called the granddaddy worms they eat a lot but they do not reproduce reproduce as fast as the other composting worms they are the most ideal worm for fishing for two reasons because of their size and because they like the cool environment and in most cases the water where you're fishing would be cooler than the external temperature so therefore they can survive longer in water than the other composting worms can so they're ideal for fishing. So if you're raising your composting worms mostly for fishing, then you might want to consider these Canadian nightcrawlers as long as you have the means to keep them cool. Now, all the composting worms with the exception of the blue worms are ideal for fishing, but the Canadian nightcrawlers are the most ideal of which the African nightcrawler is the least ideal for fishing in terms of temperature because as I mentioned before the water temperatures that you're fishing in is usually cooler than the external temperatures so these African nightcrawlers may not like it if you put them in the cold water <laughs> yes yeah, so these are the five types of composting worms so you can decide which worms to get depending on the type of worms and the temperature range that they can do well in when compared to where you're living, what temperatures they will be exposed to. Of course, you can raise not only one type, but a few types or maybe all of these composting worms. But as we can see that there's a vast difference between these worms in terms of temperature difference if you're going to be raising all five of them then you have to be able to provide the conditions that each of these type of worms require so if you enjoy this video and you would like to see what comes next 
stay tuned. Join me next week, Wednesday, where we will be discussing the type of worm bin that is most suitable for you. Uh, we'll go in depth into different types of worm bin and that will help you to make your decision as to which worm bin you would like to use. So don't miss out. So if you enjoy my video and you'd like to see more videos like this, then please take a moment to give me a thumbs up. You can leave your comment in the section below or if you have any questions, you can leave those in the section below as well and I will answer them as quickly as possible. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe and don't forget to turn on your notification for more updates like these. Thank you so much for watching and have yourself a wonderful day. Yemen, yeah, a time for growth.